You didn't really have one guy that went off offensively, but a lot of guys. I think nine of all all of the nine that played double digit minutes scored at least five points. Really bounced back on the offensive end tonight. How much did you appreciate that? I do appreciate the fact that, and I wasn't real happy with the way we started the game. You know, I think our first six possessions we shot quick threes, and uh, but once we settled in. You know, we've got an unselfish team. Uh, we had talked about coming in the game more defense, defensively what we needed to do to get better defensively because we still think we've got a ways to go there. Was with one-on-one -on -one defense, knowing that we're going to play against Georgia's guards who are tough to guard, and especially late in the shot clock when they're just going to go at you. And um, they got a, you know, they got a, some wiggle to them where they can set you up, step back, set you up, drive, and. Didn't want to foul. We thought that was important. And uh, when we, early in the game, some of those shots led to them getting some easy baskets. But offensively, when we're moving the ball, sharing the ball, that's when we play our best basketball. What went so well defensively over the, the final 30 minutes or so? What? What went so well defensively? Maybe the final 30 minutes, you got about 24 points in that range. Well, you know what? We, uh, as you guys know, you like pressure in the ball, but when there's going to be games where you're going to have to back up a little bit and contain, you know, give some cushion, contain and contest. And uh, early, I thought we were too close. Uh, certainly, we were aware that we didn't want them to come in and help over help and give up wide open threes because they've proven they can do that too. We felt like the biggest thing that we had to do was not foul, and uh, we just didn't want to give them a chance to get to the free throw line that way. And, but overall, again, the two th areas that we had spent time on the last two days, two and a half days, has been our one-on-one -on -one defense, our ball screen defense, and we're going to – the rest of the way, we're going to have to be good in those areas because if we guard the way we're capable of and get people in a situation where the clock's coming down, it's going to be some type of ball screen or some kind of weave game into a drive game, and so we've got to get better there. Grant, Ryan, and Wes. You guys are one of the better teams in basketball going on 10 over runs or something around that number. What goes into that other than obviously up like the defense, but up to score points in those moments as well? You know, really, when Grant, we were moving the ball and we're, and we're looking to make the pass as opposed to catching the ball and already predetermined. We, we still, I think Julian's dealing with that right now where he wants to be so good every time at uh, making up his mind, not being quite as patient as he needs to be. Uh, in terms of seeing the whole court. But when we uh, we move the ball, get our spacing, you know, we're going to end up with some good shots. And then you couple that with the fact that we can get some deflections, which in the first half tonight we had 19 deflections. That, and you hope some of those lead to easy baskets in transition. But it's a combination, but I think, with a couple of different things that get you going on those runs. Plus, if you can get some stops in there, that's what really can kind of break it loose for you. What did Zakai and Santi do defensively to take Georgia out of their rhythm? Well, again, Santi, you know, I mean, he does it night in and night out. Uh, he, he was not feeling well at LSU, and uh, really, Josiah told me, told him before the game, you're going to have to help me. I'm not going to do anything but lock in on the defensive end. And when you get a guy that has that mindset going in, I think, and, and, I, and I think he does that. I, I, I think he goes into the game knowing that he – I asked this question the other day. I think one of the hardest things for a player to go in thinking that, you know, I've got to make shots. And the, and the answer to that is if you think about game plan, get lost on the defensive end, and just know that when I'm open, if you get open, I've got, I got to make them. And I think, that, I think that's his mindset. I don't think he goes in the game thinking at all that I've got to force shots. I think he goes in the game with a mindset on what he's got to do to help his team win, and it starts on the defensive end. And, he, and he's done a great job all year. He is truly a guy that you think about it four years ago, everybody in the league went after him, and now he's a, a guy that does so much on the defensive end for us. Rick, when you say this team can get not just better, but a lot better defensively, how do you how do you make sure that's something the players understand, or do you think they do? Because I mean, like the rest of us, they can look at the numbers and see that they're well, you know, sometimes numbers, like when you guys normally probably vote for defensive player of the year, you probably look at guys that block shots by the numbers. I don't think that necessarily means you're a great defensive player. I mean, to me, Jonas, the dude should be blocking three or four shots a game. Great defensive guys are 
Santiago's one of them. Zakai's one of them. Josiah does a good job. Tyreek did a terrific job tonight. Jemai Meshack, when he's locked in, does it. They impact the game because not only do they do what they need to do, guarding their man, they, they're fix-it guys. They, they, uh, they're they there to, when something breaks down, they can fix it. And uh, uh, so you ask, how can we get better? Consistency. You know, can we be consistent every night with each guy knowing what he's got to do to get better? Uh, again, I'm really thought our post guys, we, we had a major breakdown, one of the first plays of the game on the dunk. You know, we can't get keep two guys on the ball. We did it. And uh, but as the game went on, we we really I thought what we've talked about the last couple of games, we were better. Rob and Reese, coach, coach, you didn't have anybody play 30 minutes tonight. Got a bunch of guys. I guess played 13, 18, 20 plus. Is that a reflection of the school in the second half, or you spread it around? You know, a little bit of both. You know, I, I think that uh, really proud of Tobey getting out there. He needs minutes. I mean, you guys have watched him. He's growing up right in front of us, and you know his, his minutes. Urosh. You know, been sick. You know, he's coming off uh, not doing a lot of practicing, but he—I thought he was a real factor early in the game. And he, uh, when we went with back to our traditional big lineup, that's really kind of when we got control of the game because we finally started putting the ball inside and putting some pressure on him. Made a couple of nice inside-out passes, but uh, the fact is, and you guys have seen us—they've all, every guy that's played at some point in time. You go back to Jemai Meshack making that shot at against Maryland in the corner, big, huge play in that game. I don't think they make those plays if they don't get some minutes. And I want them all when they go out there to be comfortable. But they will also tell you, if they don't earn it in practice, I, I tell them every day, I leave practice, go home and watch that practice tape. I get thoughts in my mind, I say, you better make sure those thoughts are good thoughts. Because as you start formulating the game plan, and again, our coaches do a great job with that. Uh, but I, I, again, these guys work hard, and if they work hard. We're gonna, we're gonna, we we trust them all. We do. We just want to give them all the chance to play if, if they earn it, and uh, hope that when their numbers call, they're, they're they're productive. Coach in the back here, it seemed like there was more of an emphasis to get the ball down low. How much of that was a scouting report, or was it just a how the game unfolded? Every game, we want to play inside out. Every game, I, I don't. Again, that's why I was I was not real happy the way we started. And and again, if I were playing Tennessee, I would say, hey, let's let them start jacking threes at the very. And it could have been a little carryover because we shot the ball well the other night at LSU. But you can't. Every game takes on its personality, and that goes back to the. I, talk, I use the word consistency, knowing how we want to work the game. And uh, but again, inside out is not necessarily throwing it to a post guy. It could be driving, playing off two feet. You know, make them work. You know, not just standing back behind the line shooting. If they're not working, and and uh, doesn't give you great rebound position, to, uh, a chance to go get offensive rebounds. I thought they were really good early in the game, keeping us off the glass, and then uh, because we didn't move them at all, and then they got some runouts because of shots that I don't think we really expected would go up. What do you like about what Kobe gave you all tonight? You know, he's getting more patient with the ball. You know, he's, he's still got to play quicker. And, you know, Tubbe's got really good hands. He's, he's strong, as you guys know. He's, he's, a, he's a big 17-year-old kid right now that's growing up in front of us is what he is. And he, he, he takes it really serious. Uh, you watch him after practice. I mean, everything he does, he does with a purpose. He's, 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 he wants to be good. And, uh, you know, he, uh, he's confident. He... Uh, he, he thinks that every rebound goes up, he should have it, and he's willing to go try to get it. And it's going to be fun. And it's fun. It's fun coaching a guy like that. And uh, a lot like what we talk about, uh, Z's DNA, you know, just a competitive player, it's in his too. They come out, like I've told you, a great AAU program, played for good high school coaches, and uh, those guys, they're going to they're gonna compete. Not the best scoring night from Julian tonight, but he's still kind of – found some ways to affect the game, got has six assists. Just how big is that for him to learn how to do that? Well, we want him to stay aggressive, but he's got to, he's got to see the court too, you know, he, because, you know, as, game, as games go on, I mean, we're getting scouted too. And people say, hey, he gets the ball, he's coming at you. So he's going, you know, getting the gaps, you know, shrink the court on him. He's going to have to continue to do that, but we want him to be aggressive. I'd rather him err on that side of it than not being aggressive at all. All right, Coach, thank you. All right, thank you, thank guys. You.